is a practice exercise from page 356 in the textbook. They're asking us about delocalized bonding. So we're going to draw a couple of different Lewis structures and see if we can figure out which of those would have delocalized bonding. In order to understand delocalized bonding, we have to make sure we know what we're looking for. So delocalized bonding essentially means that the atoms are going to stay in the same place, but the electrons are free to move kind of between different areas of the molecule. So this should sound really similar to the idea behind resonance structures. Essentially, when we look for delocalized bonding, what we are looking for is resonance structures that have pi bonding causing the resonance. And you should know that looking for pi bonds means we're looking for double or triple bonds. So let's start by drawing these Lewis structures the same way we always would, count up the number of valence electrons we have to work with. So for the first one, for SO3, we've got six valence electrons from the sulfur, six from each of the oxygens. We're looking at a total of 24 valence electrons. We're going to put the sulfur in the center, single bonds to each of the oxygens, so there's 6 there, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Checking our octets, we can see that each oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8 valence electrons, but the sulfur only has 2, 4, 6. So what that means is that we can't put any more electrons in. We need to have one of the oxygen atoms share a pair instead of using it as a non-bonding pair. So it doesn't matter which oxygen I pick, I'm just going to take off one of the non-bonding pairs of electrons and turn that into a shared bonding pair of electrons. Now that oxygen still has two, four, six, eight electrons around it, but sulfur also has two, four, six, eight. So now I've got everyone's octet complete. And what's important is that in order to do that, it didn't matter that I chose this specific oxygen atom. I could have done that to either of the other oxygen atoms. So in reality, I should be able to draw other resonance structures with the double bond in this position or this position, which means the true structure really isn't this. It's an average of all the different resonance structures. Well, if it's really an average, that means that these pi electrons can really be in different areas of the molecule. They are delocalized. So that is going to be one of my structures that has delocalized electrons because I see that there are resonance structures that I could draw, even though I haven't drawn all of them, there are resonance structures I could draw that involve pi bonding. So I'm going to circle that since that's one of the ones with delocalized bonding. Well, what about SO3 with a two negative charge? What happens when I give it two extra electrons? Well, in this case, I'm going to have 26 electrons to work with. And as you might expect, my structure is going to look a little bit different. And I've actually already drawn this before, and I know that the way this looks is once I complete the octet on all of the oxygen atoms, I've actually only used 24 electrons, so I have extra electrons. Since I have extra electrons, I don't need to make a double bond. I'm just going to stick those extra electrons on the sulfur, Check everybody's octet, 2468, 2468, 2468, and again 2468. Since everyone's octet is complete, this is a good Lewis structure. I'm just going to put it in brackets with the charge on the outside. Notice that there is no pi bonding here. I didn't need it because of the extra electrons, so there's no delocalization of those pi electrons. So I do not need to worry about it for the sulfite ion, even though I did need to worry about it for sulfur trioxide. Okay, let's do the next one, that H2CO. Again, counting up the valence electrons, I've got one from each of the hydrogens, four from the carbon, six from the oxygen. That gives me a total of 12 electrons to work with. Now, I said that usually the atom we write first is the central atom, but you should know that hydrogen cannot be the central atom since it only forms one bond. So carbon really is our central atom here. So I'm going to have... Hydrogen coming off of the carbon, oxygen coming off of the carbon. That has already cost me six electrons. I don't need any more on the hydrogen because they're okay with only having two electrons, but I do need some more on the oxygen. But if I put 
all the rest on the oxygen like that. Now I've got my 12 electrons in the structure, but I can see that even though the hydrogens are fine and the oxygens are fine, the carbon does not have a complete octet. It's only got two, four, six. That means again, I'm gonna have to take a non-bonding pair from the oxygen and turn that into a bonding pair of electrons. So I will have a double bond, but think about the resonance idea. Can this double bond go anywhere else? Can I double bond between carbon and hydrogen? And the answer is I cannot. Remember that hydrogen only needs two electrons, so there's no reason to ever double bond between carbon and hydrogen. Because of that, there's no other location for this double bond, so there's no resonance. If there's no resonance, there are no delocalized pi electrons. So even though this one does have a pi bond, there's no resonance, so it's not considered delocalized. All right, let's take a look at O3, that's ozone. I've got three oxygens. They're each bringing six valence electrons, which means I have a total of 18 to work with. In this case, oxygen is going to be the central atom. Since I know a little bit about the geometry of this in advance, I'm gonna draw my Lewis structure like this. So that's cost me four electrons. So now I've used all 18 electrons, and I can see that I've got a complete octet for my oxygens on the outside, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, but my central oxygen only has 2, 4, 6, so because of that, I'm going to need to take one of my non-bonding pairs and turn that into a shared or bonding pair of electrons. Now there was no particular reason for me to pick on the oxygen on the right hand side instead of the left hand side, which means I could draw resonance structures for this. So I could draw the resonance structure with the double bond over here on this side. Since I can draw a resonance structure, that means that I do have those delocalized pi electrons because I've got a double bond, I've got a pi bond that can move because of that resonance. Remember that double bond really isn't moving. Essentially there are multiple ways to draw it, meaning the true structure is an average of both of them. So if we're thinking about the bonding in ozone, it's not correct to say that it's got a single bond and a double bond. What's correct to say is that the true bond is an average of a single bond and a double bond because those electrons can really move all along the molecule. So it's not gonna be as long as a single bond, but it's not gonna be as short as a double. It's gonna be somewhere in between. And again, those movement of those pi electrons, that's the delocalization. So ozone will have delocalized bonding. Last one I'm gonna do, the NH4 with a positive charge. So that is my ammonium cation. Again, nitrogen brings five valence electrons, each hydrogen brings one. That positive charge actually means I'm missing an electron, so instead of the nine that that adds to, I'm only gonna have eight electrons to work with. Putting my nitrogen in the center, and I can tell it's gonna be tetrahedral because I've got those four electron domains. I've used all eight of my electrons, remembering that hydrogen doesn't need an octet, all of the hydrogens are fine with only two electrons. The nitrogen does feel like it has eight, two, four, six, eight, and I need to remember to put it in brackets with the charge on the outside. And again, since there are no pi bonds, no double or triple bonds, there is no resonance for this. I've only got single bonds, so I do not need to worry about delocalized bonding here. So the only two species that have the delocalized bonding are that sulfur trioxide and ozone. Again, you're looking for molecules that you could possibly draw resonance structures for, where you've got that pi bond, that double bond, looking like it's moving locations. Remembering again that with resonance structures, the real structure is an average of all the possible resonance structures.